Next, we had our Dublin 10 stop, which was an equine center. This was the most stressful location. These postal codes have been there for so long, and it's sad that they're thinking of actually getting, well, they are going to get rid of them and, and change it into something that's going to be more user-friendly. We did not even have a physical address this was one of the ones I had to get from Jared on because it was very hard. And when her friend or sister from Ireland suggested something about horses, you know, I was like, we gotta, we've got gotta to go. figure this out, you know, because John is obsessed with horses. I did just see like house after house and I just kept wondering where on the earth is this equine <laughs> center gonna be? But And finally, it was like seeing the stadium, you see this huge arch with the name on it and we found it. You know, I'm sure we seem really weird, but we're just like, is there any way we could just see some of your stables or horses? And unannounced, we get a grand tour of the whole complex. You know, it just makes me so happy when these little things start to get ticked off. I was familiar with all the streets and every place they went. And even on Facebook, I don't know, do you remember I would say, every day I would say something like, Did you see the floozy and the jacuzzi and he <laughs> loved uh, Two out of 11, five <laughs> out of 11. Hysterically. You know, I would just announce it. When Ryan posted the picture of Molly Malone. So many of our 11 destinations were finished. Glass Devon Cemetery. Third day. We started out in Dublin 11 at the Glass Nevin Cemetery. The weather was perfect. It was probably 70 degrees, sunny. They have a very modern new museum. Huge museum they built out of glass. Combined with very historic headstones. And it is the most beautiful grounds I've ever seen. You go there and there's a huge flower stand out front. They have this beautiful building that's all about life. There's a funeral procession coming through and it was a glass purse pulled by two horses. I mean, how beautiful is that? I want my funeral now. I mean, <laughs> uh, Next week, came back to Dublin 7. We went to the Supreme Court. Also known as Four Courts. Uh, it's right on the river as well. And there's no cameras allowed. They had the wigs. Interesting to wigs. see. Yeah, very regal. So I'm leaving the security area, I'm walking out, and I turn around to take a picture. She goes, oh, no, 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 not yet. A little further out. I'm like, all right, well, just don't arrest me. Tell me the rules and I'll follow them. Um, we, had a, we had a wonderful lunch after that and made our way to Dublin One, which was the Hugh Lane Gallery. The most exceptional thing about this gallery, but there is the Francis Bacon Studio. Of course, the main thing I wanted to see was the studio. Fine, Ryan, he's in this area that a movie's playing about Francis Bacon. I love it when they have a video component. Well, obviously. <laughs> he is there with his journal, like writing. What I've kind of read is that he had a falling out with his father or family and just left Ireland and always sort of hated it, you know, even though his roots were there. When he is writing notes like that in some kind of a lecture or about art things, I mean. He liked chaos. He called it organized chaos. He's loving it. Who does that sound a little bit like? <laughs> so, the National Botanical Gardens. Dublin 9. Of course, this is the one that I had to send pictures to my mom on my phone right away. What I liked about these were it wasn't all outdoor. It's like a stadium, and four stories tall. Huge conservatory greenhouses. A city of multiple buildings that was so impressive. We had a little lunch there. They had a, um, a cafe at the Botanical Gardens, which was cute. We actually went and had a beer. And a little side note about that, we get these international packages for our phones. Two days after I'm there, I get a call from them on my text message. All the data has been suspended. You can't use it. They're, and I call and they're like, well, your current bill is $900. At, no, I didn't have a, I had a whiskey. At a bar called um, Cavanaugh's, but it's known as the Grave Diggers Bar. And we'd actually heard about it through Jaredine's brother, JJ. Why they call it the Grave Diggers, okay, it, and we didn't realize where we were. We, when we got to the Botanical Gardens, the bar called the Grave Diggers is butted up against the Glass Nevin Cemetery. And then our next stop was Dublin 5. Um, this was a shopping center called the Artane Castle Shopping Center. One of the reasons Ryan picked this location is just to show that we're so similar. I was very interested to see where John would go with his art piece from this one. 
people in there with their baskets and they're getting their soap and they're getting their food for that night, just like we would here at a supermarket or a Walmart or any kind of shopping area. And I was impressed. When I get you the images of the art, and I'm waiting for the security officer to come up and think I'm taking some like pictures to put on like the inquiring minds want to know. Where is their beauty in the Walmart or Tesco? Dublin, the haters of Tesco. You know, but he can, he can find it. But there was this huge gumball machine. Was, and so I took a picture of that and that's a big focal spot on that piece. And that just represents the world, the little components, all the little worlds within that the colors, the stimulation, you get shopping, hopefully, or you won't buy. I, I think this is an amazing one. Clontarf Castle. Our last one was Clontarf Castle in Dublin 3. Now this location was when I had my text message from AT&T that my bill was $1,000. <laughs> Historically was a castle. They have re, uh, renovated it to where it is a working hotel. So we sit down to have a drink. We're gonna have a celebratory drink. It's the end of visiting locations. I was about to celebrate and go crazy because we'd finished. He orders, I go take this phone call. I go back to the table. And I'm like, oh my gosh, you wouldn't believe what just happened. They sent all this money and all this. And then Ryan goes, a rape. So I get the studio all set up. And then all of a sudden, and I have done some sketches a little, it's like two days till I have to leave. I was so overwhelmed. For members of the First Class Club, they get, a, they get an original work on paper as part of their membership. And then I had 11 works on panel. So that's 22 pieces of art to do. So I go into the hallway outside of my studio, the common area, and I lay out all 11 wood panels and start getting notes and putting it on each one, what, what I've done sketch-wise to get it all. And then I felt like I could handle it. She was a neighbor of ours. I used to babysit for Frances's three sons. You know, like Frances was at my wedding, she was at my brother's wedding, and it was funny because at my wedding, Frances wasn't involved in politics at the time, but my brother was introducing her to guests at my wedding and said, this is the future prime minister of Ireland. Frances Fitzgerald is the minister of children under the president of Ireland. This was our last day, our last full day in Dublin. Um, we met her at the Irish Houses of Parliament. Shortly after that, then Francis went into politics. I wanted to try and do something special for Ryan and John for the trip. This is all through Jared, and she's, she's organized all this for us. That would make their trip different. She was the most gracious person. They brought us to a little corridor called the Doll. She was, and I'm going into the building, and I have this package, and I'm going through security, and I'm talking to her aides, don't you want to open this packet? You know, it's nothing, it's just a painting. And the next thing you know, here she comes, it's just beaming, and John presented her with a portrait of her. She opens the package, and she's the one, like, let's take pictures and all this, just like Ryan's mom. We're so honored to meet her, you know. And finally, one of these guards comes up and is like, I'm so sorry, minister, but you know, we can't take pictures in here. I mean, I think after the 50th picture, he had to come up and say <gasps> something to us. And she's, she laughed and she said, it's, she said, blame it on the minister or something like, something like that. So then she's like, let's go outside and take more pictures in front of the building. She thought she wanted us to have some more pictures. So we're out there and then another minister of like finance comes up and we're meeting him. We're just internally beaming this whole time. We leave and we're going to this little bar to have a beer or whatever. There's actually two bars and the Parliament houses. There's one for visitors and there's one for members only. We find out there's two mirror bars, exactly the mirror image. One we were in for visitors like us and one is another one only for elected cabinet members of the government. We, um, you know, had a beer and... Um, Former and present. Not their spouses, not their aides, not their friends, not a foreign... Oh, President Obama was Private just there. Club. He's not allowed in. That's right. Uh, you know, the minister came to, uh, to say goodbye at the very end, and I thought that was very nice. I would say that was the highlight of our trip. Two days after we get home, we get an email Ryan received from our, uh, Gerald Dunn, and the email was, just so you know, your visit has been written up in the uh, national newspaper of Ireland. A plus, I would give Dublin high ratings. It was just beautiful, and it's just that kind of recognition that helps evolve the career. One of those things you can't plan to have happen. I think the series is particularly powerful because it was tied to these destinations. 
thrilled. This is the only time that halfway through it, I hated everything. And of course, when that's happening, you can't understand that's part of the process. And I guess if we did, the depth would not be pulled out. And so I went through that cycle with these pieces, which makes them very important to me. I'm very, very impressed with his Dublin 2011 series. And I'm talking around like, well, Ron, what do you think about this member of the First Class Cub or this member? Because I wanted to think about something in a conversation we've had. Um, you'll ask me this question now many years in a row, and I'll probably always have the same answer. But the reason I'll be able to honestly have the same answer is because it is different than anyone I've ever seen. Where I'm able to think through more components of that work on paper that I do for them, there that makes it even more meaningful and so they really know I've thought about them. So you're not only seeing a piece of art, you're seeing a piece of that city specifically. So with the evolution of it, the beautiful part of it is it's becoming more intimate with each member of the First Class Cub. So today is my first full day in the studio to create. I can't wait to see it. I love to travel because you're raw, open, anxious, scared. Got no expectation of what it's going to be because Ryan has not given any hints. I can't believe how good instant coffee is when you're in here. And I'm not going to ask. Susan Catlett, okay, I know she loves horses. Um, Shelly Contreras, McDonald's. Okay, I'm going to sit in the park when I get there and take pictures of it. Hey, I'm sorry. Oh, Ryan. Okay. I'm just going to do still. Yeah, yeah. They're both like, do we have an appointment? Do we have an appointment? <laughs> Just making sure it's only. But I, I can't wait to see. I, I can't wait to see. The beauty of coming home. I love coming home.